I'm going to call the Loudoun County Commission workshop for May 18, 2020 to order. It's got to be close to 601. So, the only person who wants to address the commission is Bo Carey. So, Bo, tell us what's on your mind. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, just want to give you a catch up on 150 years Loudoun County celebration. We've had a, a few changes, as you can imagine. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, you asked uh, about that when I came in. But, uh, so I want to give you uh, the quick and dirty. Over the next three or four weeks, we'll be sending out, I'm going to say, um, a half a dozen news releases. One's already out, and there should be a story in local papers this week. Um, and it will basically be asking people the following questions. Uh, in 1970, when the time capsule was buried, were you there? Uh, asking people to respond to our website or to our, by email uh, to our contacts. Uh, if you were, uh, did you participate? Um, what have you uh, heard about it? Um, it asks the questions. Uh, I'll just read it. That's better than freelancing. Because have you been out of the country? Has anybody visited? Do you have a cough? Do you have a fever? I think you're talking about a different topic. Mr. Oh, okay. Our, our uh, press release uh, and obviously the radios will be, we hope will uh, share the message. Were you there in 1970? What do you remember about it? Did you put something in the time capsule? What stories has your family told you about that time? Okay. And do you have any pictures you can share from 1970? Now obviously what we're really trying to do is harvest that information that when it's time to uh, share the contents from 1970 that if any family members have claims on it or if they can help identify it, that would be very instrumental in what our committee does going ahead. So look for that uh, this week, that information. And if any of you were there in 1970, or if your great-grandmother told you something, uh, that she put a, um, a, a, lock, a lock of her hair in an envelope and wanted you to have it, uh, then we'll try to facilitate that. Um, secondly, our coloring book is just about done. And we've, uh, uh, Cindy Benefield and Miss Chris Peterson from Loudon High School, Cindy is from over in Greenback, serves on our committee. They have put together a wonderful coloring book with about 36 different sites throughout the county that young children will be able to, uh, to enjoy and, and young adults can, can enjoy too. Everybody likes a coloring book. Uh, the, uh, we've also uh, been, in order to, to fund ourselves in this project, we've been trying to sell what uh, some of our, our committee members call swag, but it's all sorts of memorabilia, and I think everybody uh, that's interested in, in history and in Loudoun County's celebration should consider buying one. Beverly Sweeney's done a great job with that, and Beverly's here. She represents us uh, in Lenore City, works at the Lenore City Museum. This is just, we got about eight or nine different items that we sell medallions, keychains, badges, uh, what, all, what all else is on there? Um, a couple Christmas ornaments, um, a magnet or a refrigerator magnet, this large pan. We have lapel pins, but it seems to be dislodged. So those are available at the shops on the square. I'm not trying to self-promote here, right over here on, on the next corner. I think Beverly's trying to find a place in Lenore City and Greenback. We can also sell them. Uh, we were doing it through the Loudoun County Visitors Bureau, but I guess they're still shut down, aren't they? I suppose. <laughs> if not, they'll be up and running, and we're doing okay with that. So that's our swag. Um, so here's the here's the biggie. Um, and Ruth McQueen's here. Um, I'm gonna. Yes. So I know that uh, uh, Commissioner Brewster and Commissioner, uh, which. Uh, I think Commissioner Tinker were concerned and admonished us we should have maybe wait until the June 20th event uh, to, to dig up the time capsule. And uh, with everything going on, and, and bottom line, uh, Henry, we're not going to have a, a big public event on June 20th. Imagine that. So we did uh, 
I think maybe Kelly said we don't want to have a we want to have an aha moment, or maybe that was you, uh, Commissioner Tinker, whatever. So it would be great to have an aha moment and a, a wonderful positive surprise on June 20th. Well, not only is there not going to be a big rally here on June 20th, but if we had done it, it would have been uh, what is what did you call it, Ruth? Uh, an uh-oh. An uh-oh instead of an aha. <laughs> so here's I'm here to fess up. We went ahead, and Mr. Wilson from the uh, Monument Company up in Lenore City came down with our county historian Daryl Tuck and Ruth, and we went ahead and pulled it out because we just didn't want to have any bad surprises. Uh, I didn't make that decision. Our group unanimously decided it was better to use some caution there. The good news is, if you're looking at your and uh, at your, did, did these you, you guys yeah. get one? Uh, if you're looking at that, you'll see the uh, the bottom picture. That's what remained. Uh, the, the weather, the elements, absolutely destroyed it. Absolutely, and it's so disappointing, so disappointing. But uh, we're determined to make something positive out of it. Now, um, I know uh, we had. Uh, what we we salvaged a bunch of coins that people had put in. Can we we, those? Uh, we will have the coins. Well, no. not, they're not in yeah. your container. Yeah. Nice, nice try. Nice try. Um, Some of these ashes. We uh, there's there's a couple of envelopes. There's something we think from the Wampler family in there, but we haven't been able to identify much more. Uh, sorry, I know better than that. Obviously not. <laughs> She's going to be mad later. <laughs> um, so uh, we know there are some, um, there's a watch, there's a knife, there's a little toy truck, there's some paper items, there's, there's a couple of dog tags. And we will have a nice um, aha moment on those when we, when we identify them with Military family. dog tags, not for No, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, so we've got those items and we do want to reveal them to the public at the right time. Um, Chairman, Mayor, Bled, Mayor Bradshaw, I can't say, Mayor Bradshaw was notified within two hours of us getting the bad news. We didn't want it to come back and surprise him. We did ask him to keep it in confidence, but we thought he, as the mayor, should know about it. And so uh, until we can make plans to do something about it. And so I do appreciate you keeping that confident uh, this time. And, uh, no, no, he was bribed. I promised him brown. Yeah, that's right. yeah he, was, he was sworn under oath to do that. And, and I appreciate Word got out pretty quick. I'm sure. Yeah, you, you don't have people down here in the middle of the day yeah, digging was, a hole in the... Um, the whole annex was locked yeah, yeah, there was no John Slater going on. All right, so I, I'm the only one to believe that. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, but anyway, we, uh, we do want to have an event, a virtual event. I've talked with Chip here about possibly doing something on the, uh, on the 20th because that's what our predecessors 50 years asked us to do. We'll invite uh, Mrs. Benny Stafford, who, her husband is deceased, of course, was the chairman, and, and Dr. Paul Brakeble and uh, Harvey Sproul, who were his co-chairman, to be involved. I'm sure the mayor will probably invite this group and our committee, but other than that, we can't have a big social gathering. So we'll be spread out as far as we can on the courthouse lawn with an alternative rain date so that we can have a virtual event or whatever you call it, something to honor that dedication. But our plan is to, uh, at that point, is when that's the date that we would like to be un showing everybody. What date? The, uh, June 20th, I'm sorry. June 20th, 10 a.m. Right there. And why can't you have people? Well, things may change by then. Well, Friday, everything changes. Okay. Well, we, I mean, we're, we're going to meet before then and come up with whatever alternatives we can, but we, we still want to have a huge rally. And with, with the new content span, so we want to. We're thinking the longer we delay it, the better chance we can have a huge rally in the fall, uh, where, where we then would have collected all the new contents for a 2070 time capsule. That makes sense. And we would display the the old as well between now and then. So we want to have a, an official event. An official event uh, to honor the compacts we have with the, with the 1970 group on June 20th at 10 a.m. Hopefully here at the courthouse, unless it's raining, we'll have an alternative place. Then we want to uh, um, let me not get ahead of things here. I've got about two more items to report. 
we want to uh, have a big event with the new time capsule late in the year. Um, one of the next press releases that we'll have coming out will be talking about that new time capsule. Um, we, we, the Greenback Historical Society has sponsored that project. They've come up with some very good protective type envelopes. Um, they've come up with a template so that if a second grader wants to write something down and knowing he's got a better chance than, than some of us do at being there in 50 years, uh, then that second grader can have some suggestions in the template. You know, what's your favorite color? Were you born, what town were you born in? Uh, what would you say to somebody 50 years from now? Uh, lots of other people won't need that kind of prodding. They can put whatever they want, a family picture. Uh, I thought a great idea, Mayor Bradshaw told me, he said, I want to write a letter to the, whoever's mayor in 2070. Well, that's a super idea. Uh, but... Uh, getting that done. <laughs> The so that's our plan, and you'll be seeing that um, that recommendation will be coming out in a press release. But we'll have they can both snail mail it to the Greenback Historical Society's address or email it to 150 Years of Loco uh, at gmail.com. So we'll have two ways people can submit these. Um, the uh, we would ask those in the room, and I'm sitting here next to. A press person, so I probably have shot myself in the foot already. Uh, that we not go too public with the information about the uh, uh, about the uh, old contents. We don't really want to make a big deal about of that until we get uh, second week of June, right before we have the official event. We've talked about having a traveling road show, putting those contents in a glass case, show them off at the Little City Museum for maybe a month, Greenback Museum, maybe in the county building, uh, somewhere down in Philadelphia, somewhere we're in Teleco Village and and do that, uh, you know, just to, to let every community come in and look at it. Um, but then we hope to have something much bigger going on after that. Uh, so we would ask that we not go too, let's don't get too public with that if we can and let our, our information, our official press release come out here in a couple of weeks around the second week of June. The uh, um, Here's the biggie that I want to, want to throw at you. So any, are there any questions so far on what you've been given? Uh, that shows Mr. Wilson's crew digging. It shows it, the, what, the condition of the casket was awful. Uh, and then we, we brought it up. Well, one recommendation yes. I would say to the committee, do away with a concrete box and go with more of a vault, a burial vault or something like that, and you'll be foolproof because the use of the ball, you know, that's the reason you have a lot of water damage and other factors destroying that material. Well, let's talk about that. Um, money, now you want money. Uh, no, I want to throw something at you. And, and that is, uh, we, Daryl uh, Tuck, our county historian, started looking into about a month ago because of the disappointment of the weathering into an above ground vault, a mausoleum, some different possibilities. The funeral homes are pretty much going to help us, they're going to sponsor something like that in terms of, an, of, of a, but we would like it to be above ground. And uh, Beverly and some of the folks on our committee at our last meeting came up with a, a wild card. Um, the, uh, that is, we would like to put the old, the new vault, which could be huge, or it could be all compacted, just a bunch of envelopes, um, in the old courthouse. Display it there for years and years. Then take the small glass case with the contents of the 1970 that for display, what's left, and maybe put that on top of it. We would like this body to think about this over the next month. Um, whether you think that we could do that. Uh, if I was telling the mayor, when you, if you go to Blount County Courthouse, uh, it's like a museum in there. It's not meant to be, and we don't want our courthouse to be a museum. Uh, what, but there's different places as you walk around the halls and go down into the annexes where you see old memorabilia or plaques or statues or uh, art about the history of Blount County. And so what we're saying is if we could find a little nook or cranny in a corner, in a hallway, along a wall, 
in the courthouse where when people come and visit they'll see oh this is cool uh, this is the stuff that they put in in 1970 and this is the stuff that's going to get dug up in 2070 or not dug up but we would like it number one above ground number two uh, we would like this group uh, to consider placing that in the courthouse um, the, when, once it's done. I know there's space issues, um, but uh, we, we would be, we're glad to come up with the containers and whatnot to make that happen. Don't want to argue tonight, I'm sure y'all don't want to either, but we would like you to, to take that under consideration. And here's the, the, I know that I rose a little firestorm with Susan's office because we, we discovered that the old charred beams that have been taken out by the construction company and some huge steel rods, which I assume were stabilizing rods, had been taken out. And Susan knows the law. She informed me, said, well, yeah, but you're supposed to dispose of things, you know, I guess salvage materials at that auction. There's a process, and I understand that. I didn't understand it until she explained it. But we were saying, oh, we'll take that and make souvenirs and stuff out of it. And then, then, we, then when she informed us of the law, then we said, wouldn't it be cool if we could take some of that material and make it into the display case that, would, that could possibly go in the courthouse? And that's, we're still willing to do that. I don't know if this body, uh, we as individual citizens, I understand, can't just go uh, get that. If it has to go to auction, we'll try to buy some of it. If that's what has to happen, and then we'll make our cases if you decide it's something worthy of putting in the courthouse. Okay? So, uh, that's, that's, a, that's a mouthful. We would like you to consider putting the, the new vault in the courthouse. It could be a vertical deal. It could be down under the floor with the new vault on top. We think you can make a wonderful cabinet, and I think um, some of our committee has already come up with some sketches, but we think you can make a wonderful cabinet out of those materials that were possibly in the original courthouse 148 years ago, the steel rods and the, and the old charred beams. Um, failing that, we can, we can come up with a brand new state-of-the-art one that, uh, that doesn't have that historical reference. But either way, we would like you at your next meeting or at your next workshop, however the proper, uh, Henry, the proper protocol for that is, to consider uh, the old and new time capsules going in the courthouse. And any questions? Does everybody have our, our contact information? Anybody need it? Just a little while ago, I told the mayor over here, if I was in charge of the world, I'd take a chainsaw, cut them beams up one inch slice and sell for $10 a piece. You make a lot of money. Sell everybody a piece of the old courthouse, ten bucks. Well, we'd love to do that, but there's a there's can a we process. Do that? We we can do anything we want to. Well, you all vote to do that. Yeah, though. we can do whatever we want to do. As a, as That's a not, it's one thing. Giving it away is something. Yeah, right. Our committee, if our committee is given uh, through the proper law, well, I'm not going to do because she knows her stuff. Believe me, uh, uh, we if we, we would gladly we have the people with the chainsaws that are ready to go with it, whether it's just to build a, a cabinet or whether to uh, also come up with some mem some, some other uh, am I speaking out of turn here we're, we're prepared to do that uh, but again we want to abide by the proper process and not violate anything I mean on the one hand we're we are a, a, a delegated and approved body of the county we're not a body we're a, an appointed bunch of volunteers but we are prepared to do as much of that as and we're not wanting money to do it we will do the work we'll make the cabinets we'll do all that if if we can get a hold of those materials if we can't we'll build them out of something new and and won't look back uh, you know susan would i have to go to purchasing community if the materials stay inside the county government, uh -huh. that that's a decision that could be made in house. Oh. If you start selling the materials to the public, then it would have to remain in the house, county house. But if you go selling it to individuals to make souvenirs out of, then that would have to go to public auction. What if you ask for a donation? Pardon? What if you ask for a I'd be the last question, Susan, on what she's saying. But I fully believe that this body, if we won't say we can give them love, we can give them love. Well, in her defense, a challenge, when I first went with at her, it was about the ten dollars souvenir slices. <laughs> okay, so I was thinking a little greedy, and 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 that's.
that's when she had to look at Obviously, you and I have the yeah, get yeah. it. Yeah, right? and, and I, that's where I was going at it then, and that was before the committee said, you know, well, there's okay. a better use for it. But Susan, would we in-house use those materials to build a cabinet and things like that? Would, where would we need to start with that? You all can choose to use those materials to build a cabinet. So would that just be a workshop or does it need to come before purchasing before? I, I've Probably. had a conversation with the mayor about this and, and so you all can choose to build a box out of that because that box would remain inside the county. Uh, surplus property committee, if you want to start to want to sell it. Here, here's the thing, if I left those logs down there and let, normally when you demo something, the construction company disposes of the, the, the materials, the old materials. They do not have, because they're, they're taken to a landfill, they're taken to a dump. But if you want to start salvaging things out of the old courthouse, and it's going to be, those items are going to be sold or you can't just give them away to John Doe. Right. You can right. choose to make a box out of it because it's going to remain inside the county courthouse's county property. But if you want to start selling slivers or slices of it, that's something that would probably have to go to the surplus property authority and just go through the proper channels. Uh, Mayor, do you have any comments? But can, we, can we vote to sell ten dollars? Can we vote to have this committee or sell ten dollar slices of the court? We can do that. Under well, my whole idea, of course, we had we had two different people. Is how we even got to this point. Interesting. They would like to cut them up into sections. And engrave or burn, you know, 150th anniversary. It looked really good. Now, is this this group you're talking about, or is this your private well, individual? There are some others there's, in there. There's several now. Well, they're not even in consideration. These people want it. Well, they're not now, even though they're they're not officially under the Loudoun County umbrella, under the Loudoun County Historical Society. Are Sorry. they in, are they under the Loudoun County umbrella? That that may be a law question there. Well, that's my phone. Well, like, they are, and they're they're us, and they can do it. Yeah, when we when we came to you in the first yeah. at the beginning, we asked that you approve us as the Loudoun County right. uh, 150 Year Celebration Committee, and and you did, and I, I, not. But is that a committee required yeah. by state law? It's up to the battle, Come on, man. So can we not tell the contractor to give it to them? It's salvage and the contractor threw it away and give it to them. You blow it, avoid the whole problem there. Right. Could he take it to your farm store. and say they've disposed of it? Absolutely. Dump it out there on the side of the road so they, and then you come and get it. They could take it and put it on your farm. Absolutely. Or Hill, Absolutely. And then they could go to work with the chance. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll help them. I'll help them. They'll send the tractor and the wagon. I've got a tractor, man. Well, uh, uh, surplus them, sell them for a dollar a piece, limit one per customer. And that way we know we're right in the state. I mean, it, uh, it does help us avoid... Uh, How many are there? There's not a whole lot of them. There's about four or five big beams down there, and then there's a couple of steel rods in so there. So can we vote the first of June to sell them? That's or my question. Give them, to give them to the historical people. For not Give them for a Susan, is that like... For nothing. Can we do... I'll give them the dollars. How much trouble will we get in? Four dollars worth. <laughs> well, y'all can research that between now and that meeting. Historical Society. <coughs> yeah, we can take that up between now and then. You and can donate surplus county property to a nonprofit organization at the will of county commission. Or, or to ourselves, because they're a county appointed committee. Yeah, they're also a nonprofit organization. There you go. So okay. Problem solved. So if you choose to do that, we'll. You know, we're not asking you to build them, uh, pay for them. We're we're ready to do the work. Give us four dollars. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, okay. We, well, we'll have to check with our treasure over here. Fifty cents each for I mean, mods. We were prepared to go to auction, but I'm donating. Ten dollars. Yeah. I vote to donate. Totally, one hundred percent. All right, go get it. If we can, I'm fine with that. That's absolutely. We can. Are we going to donate those? Who's going to be in them? As an option. Who? You have Somebody to vote. Oh, oh, she, she said we have to vote first of June to donate it. That's fine. We don't need them yet. But if, if you can uh, if, make sure it's legal, make sure it's apropos. And if you can do it at the June meeting, uh, you know, after you do your homework, that'd be great. If it's not, uh, we, we, we're big concern is 
All right, how does this group feel about putting uh, those monuments in the courthouse? And well, we're not going to have a courthouse like for see, years. I would like to see. That's understandable. But we'll wait. <laughs> We've waited 150 years. I would like to see those materials used to build a cabinet or something for the courthouse. There's enough know. for all of absolutely. I mean, not enough. just to sell all that stuff off. But well, that's, that's our main concern, right? That's our main concern. We're not looking. Uh, here's, it, here's where you kind of get into questions. Is so say you build a cabinet, but then you've got 25 feet left over, and then you start s s slicing it up and selling it. You can still sell it as long as the funds are accounted for in the county government. Even if we've donated them to a nonprofit, they're out of our control, and they're, they're no longer ours. That that's a question I'd have to ask on because well, I don't know about that. Keep in mind, you're donating to our historic society as a branch of the Latin County. Yeah. It's a committee of the Latin County. I don't see a problem. I don't, I, the Latin County June 1st, let's donate it, and we're done. I agree. Okay, here's what's going to happen. set them up on the side of the road for garbage, and we don't know whatever happens. Well, now we do. I mean, we are devoted to being self-funded. Selling little souvenirs and stuff helps us do that. We've we've been fortunate with some of these civic clubs and and churches and and individuals that have been very kind to us. Uh, we're, we the the things we sell do help us do it. But our primary use and I go back to Kelly uh, is the primary thing we'd love to do is to make that cabinet if we can find a place in the courthouse. I understand it might be years, uh, and uh, we don't want to take away from the clerk and master, the county court clerk's critical functions space, but uh, we think that would, would be a lasting preservation of our county. Uh, the notion of souvenirs would be secondary to, to be able to use those. I know Beverly even thought about taking those steel rods and making wind chimes out of them. But uh, that's, uh, that's, we're going to give it all to the <laughs> university jurors. All right. Like, um, okay, if, you, we'll if you can do that, that's great. If you can't, we're going to keep moving. There Let me go. say what's going to happen. Susan, make sure we're legal and we're not getting into trouble. June 1st, we'll vote on it and give it all to Bo's group. Yeah. Fair enough? That's it. Uh, we I, would are like, I would like to see that, that we talk to Susan too and, and see if maybe there is a place that we can keep that in our mind as they start laying things out inside the courthouse. Susan, so that we can have just even a spot for yeah. maybe putting. If we pull those the whole thing down, start it over. Susan, excuse me. It's really a hot commodity in the old courthouse when you put offices back in there. That's going to have to be decided at a later date. Okay, but I'm just saying that might determine the size cabinets and things they build. They might need to build shadow boxes for the walls or something. And just a clarification, there is a, we were, we're not the Historical Society. There is a Loudoun County Historical Society. There's a Greenback Historical Society. They both contribute to our efforts. We are simply that temporary 150-year Loudoun County Celebration Committee, and, and we're at your disposal. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank Bo, thank you, you for bet. all your work. Thank you, it's just a shame that COVID-19 showed up. Well, we're still going to make it work good. Uh, uh, and we got a great committee. These 10 people are just dynamite. Uh, they... Uh, they really uh, they come from a lot of different backgrounds, and, and they are uh, great worker bees, especially these two right here. So okay. thank you very much. Thank you. We'll update you later. Put that on the agenda for June 1st. Okay. Got it. Mayor Buddy Bradshaw, you're next up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have several boards and committees. If it pleases this commission, I would just say uh, this one once again, uh, June, our second June meeting, we adopt the budget. Uh, equalization board, myself and my camera are still trying to find that uh, representative for it. Do you all have a planning commission representative from my nation yet? Several of these are still missing. Uh, some, uh, names, if it pleases the committee, or pleases this commission, I would just, I would be perfectly content. Leaving it there until the June 25th or even the August meeting, for that matter. Sounds good. Fair enough. But well, I, have, I have a question. One of them we can't we can't avoid. Uh, the ones that expire at the end of June have got to be dealt with. And of course, the big the big missing link here is is the Julia Harley seat on TCCA, and she can't go back on TCCA until her residency issue has been resolved in one form or the other. Commissioner Dove has represented us on that board for as many years as I've been here. 
He's always done it. And last year, for whatever reason, she really wanted to be on it, and we put her in addition to it. So June 30th, the last day of June, Commissioner Duff retains his seat. She's off. That will be my recommendation, my vote. I'll, I'll, the rest of them I can care less about. I'd be glad for somebody to take my place. You're, that's yours. You're staying. You're not going nowhere. <laughs> We're not going to have that argument this year. That's what got us in the mess last year right there. Do you want to carry that one over to June 1st? That one, will, this needs to be voted on June 1st. Okay. The rest of you do whatever you want to. Uh, I'll present it as, as I'll leave that one alone as it is. Let the commission decide. I'm not that there's litigation pending. Uh, the commission can vote that how they see fit. There's so that litigation about a committee for them. But, okay. Oh yeah, I'll end up That's the beauty of here. But it's got nothing to do with the committee appointment. That's a residency issue. No, let me up this question. That's All right. confused that I put it on June uh, 1st. I do have one addition, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Uh, talk to Susan Harrison. Did she send you that email, Tracy? Oh, she did. Okay. The, uh, just as we were leaving yes. her committee meetings, she, got a, she had a quote come in for a trailer for the election commission. It would be a little bit of an all-purpose, but in a bit of emergency, whether it's COVID-related or storm-related or whatever related, uh, she has a bid in for $6,200 for a trailer. That's the first quote, so we know it'll be no higher than that. Uh, we'll get prices around, but she has requested that uh, this commission would entertain by purchasing that trailer. It's a four-week out uh, delivery on it. Um, but she'd like to have that motor on just in the event we need. It could be a temporary polling place for that matter. Is that good? Use it to move <laughs> Problem <from> solving. <laughs> moving her. Oh, I knew he'd go there. Whether it's voting machines, moving her machines. We saw it was moving machines. Is you. PPE, no. And you said a temporary both place. There's lightning strike somewhere. Where are you going to move it to? You're going to have it down a fender. Oh. And this yeah. is a, I believe this oh, yeah. vendor was a local yeah, company. I yeah. believe this vendor was a local company. Yes, it is a Lyon County company. Where? Yeah. Over here. And we'll get quotes from Smoky uh, Valley. Well, yeah, we'll get quotes They're on the other side of it. Tracy, uh, can you put it on that COVA deal that, uh, that, we, that we talked about this afternoon? Right. Is that where the money's coming from? Well, that's she asked It's about. a possibility. It's probably a reimbursement. Right. Yeah. We'll have to pay for it. But and then get the money back. We are reviewing purchases case by case. So we'll submit it and we'll see if we get reimbursed. Okay. I think we approve it if we're going to be reimbursed. We don't know until it's done. I mean, we have to buy it. What if that's a high 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 say well, where did this idea come from? All she's stuff? been working on it, and just the bid coming, we we didn't know if we didn't get it. She got a quote come in just as we were leaving. So there are one bid come in. It's, well, it's that's the price. I haven't seen this publicly bid anywhere. Well, you don't have to bid it per se. She got a price on one to give us a something uh, to look at. Yeah, a uh, a baseline, so to speak. It may be less than that, but we know it won't be more than that. And you know, what if uh, something? Everything goes back to sleeping COVID. Something happens at the Teleco Village Church. Hurricane. 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 You know, lightning strikes the Teleco Village Church. You can't vote there. you got to have somewhere. So it can also be used as a mobile. Nothing beats permanent. But this would definitely mobile. be in an emergency. Mobile. We can use three times a year, couldn't we? Please. I, I, don't, I don't know why. A trailer. But, if we get the money back, I'm fine with it. But it's if you. But she said she knew she'd like to this commission to entertain it. Why didn't she come to the budget 30 minutes ago? She didn't have it yet. Just came in. She came in she but I mean, we haven't so. heard a word about this. But she's been working on a price for it. That's why it's in a workshop. And if I could see it, where I vote on it And I can have her send out information and uses on it as well before the June 1st meeting. Okay, you want it on the agenda? Please. Under Susan Harrison or the mayor? Yeah, but either, yeah, put it on mine. That'll be fine. I'll have Susan send out some information. Okay, we got it. All right. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Commissioner Kelly Brewster, tell us about the Courthouse Committee. Well, with everything going on and things, I know that we had, um, you were very supportive and forming the Courthouse Committee group. And this is on here just to go ahead and dissolve that group so that it doesn't hold up any kind of um, work on the courthouse. How many members y'all have? 
Seven. None. Uh, we have none at this point. And Here's, I think with a lot of the changes that are going to be in effect that that committee is not going to be necessary. So it's on there just Okay, we voted on that at a commission meeting, mm -hmm. so we're going to have to take it off on June 1st. Yeah. Okay. Unvoted. Unvoted. <laughs> Unvoted. Okay. All right. Is that it, Kelly? That's all I have. Thank you. Okay, Jack Walls, tell us about the Economic Development Agency. Um, part of your last meeting, you took a vote uh, to pass a... Uh, pilot for project strength. Uh, it was brought to my attention that we need to have a resolution attached to that. I apologize for that. In your packet, you should have a resolution uh, to that effect. It's fair. And so that's what I'm here tonight to discuss. Okay. So we have to vote back on it on June 1st? Yes. Okay. Just the resolution, correct? Just the resolution. Yep. That's right. Okay. Alrighty, we'll put it on the agenda for June 1st. Thank you. I've got um, some questions. Go ahead, yours. Go ahead. Um, Jack, I, I just wanted to get, can I get a, an official list of who's on the IBB board and how they are elected? Because I know that I had heard that there's some people that have passed away on that board. Yeah, there, there was actually an email that went to every one of you that had that list on there. That, that came off the controller that submitted uh, um, annually. Who replaced the? Yeah, but that one individual has not been replaced yet. So it's how are they? By the, I'm sorry. How are they placed on that board? By, by the mayor. Okay. okay. <laughs> Did you do that recently? What's that? Put those people on the IDB board. I've changed one person in my four years, six years. Uh, I think J. Y. McNabb was on. He died. And then Mike Webb went on it. Uh, for Webb and Sons Construction. Mr. Harry Wampler's name is still on it, and I have not replaced him yet. That's the so, big You know how long, are, yeah. how long are their terms on that? Yeah. That's a good question. Did we, did we confirm those names? Mike Webb, we did. And the rest have been on there for three years. It's now, I mean, 40 years? How long has it been since I counted? Well, That's know. my understanding. It's been a while. It went inactive for a while. This is the Lavin County IDB. Do you have a listing? Is there, is there a way that we can find out how they're elected? Because I know that they're elected by the mayor. Is this it? Industrial Bond Development Board? Yep. Mel Hines. What's his expiration date? September 2020. For all of September 2020? Well, no. Ted Wampler Jr. is 2020. Tom Myers is September 2020. James Thomason is September 2021. Jim Curtis is September 2021. Nancy Beatty is September 2021. Bruce Martin is September 22. And Mike Webb is September 22. And there's one open one on panel A. That, that was submitted to, I think that was submitted to everyone, Stiger one of your commissioners yeah. uh, by email. You got 2020, 2021, 2022, so whichever panels, hey. Where are the terms on that, how that board was developed? Four year terms? This says six year on the paper that. And there you go, six year term. Six year term. Good choose. Where that I'm sure it's in the packet because there's usually a great big, I've never changed anything with Mike, so it's probably that great big list we approved at the end of it. I'm assuming that word soon can be broken down. I just wanted to say the language on the development on that. I'm sure there's a in a box somewhere. There's probably some information about that. This I'll try to see if I can locate it. Committee itself is 1969 or something yeah. like that. It's it's been a while. So I was negative three then. Well, this one we've done a number of these over the years, and this one's the first one I've ever seen that comes with no dollar amount. It's a fixed, all, or at least what I'm reading, it's a fixed 50% of whatever their ad or whatever the property taxes are. Most of that, we can put it in there if that's the way you, you would. Well, but the one, the one we voted on last time when it was just kind of the highlights, it had 
had a fixed dollar amount in it. Which one was that? That we voted on in March. It was 300 and some odd thousand. No, it was 50 something. What, what yeah, so, so what you would what you would aim to collect is 39,608. Well, that's not what this says. But it goes in the pilot documentation. This is well, just see, to give the... And that leads me to the next part. This one gives takes everything away from this body and gives it all to the IDB board to decide. If they got together and decide they wanted to completely do something different, we're handing it off to them to make decisions. We don't have a fixed anything here. We can add that to it if this, if this board so desires. Fifty percent based on what they're claiming they're going to do is going to be way more than thirty-nine thousand dollars. Well, the, the based on the sixty, it was sixteen million dollars was the investment, the total investment. That when you break that down by fifty percent, it comes out over a five-year period. What you do is you you take and divide that five year and do a fixed rate, which comes out to thirty-nine thousand six hundred eight dollars. That was the information that I provided you at your workshop and also was at the... If you, do, if you do the math on the property taxes and the investment, the property tax without the pilot would be $107,000. If you do the 35% personal property and the 40% on the uh, real property, you're looking at $107,000 a year. So $39,000 is not 50% of one hundred seven. I'm not sure what those numbers are. I mean, I'd like to look at them. Well, it, but I, either way, I think if, it's, if it's, it's something this commission wants to put in the documentation, then I think it's something we can do. Your last one said, all we need to do is we need to know what we're doing. Essentially, this document, we're just giving it to the IDB board and they do whatever yeah, they want to. I, I don't disagree with what you're saying, but the legal terms are always, you're, you're, you're affirming that this is what you want to do and then the IDB is the one that puts the legal documentation together to the, to the company. <laughs> and that's a little scary. I don't remember them being elected to nothing. But I got an answer for what they do. Most of your, your IDs are. $16 million. If you do the math on personal and real property, it comes out that their property taxes would be $107,000 a year. This document that you gave us tonight says they're going to pay 50% of whatever the ad valorem taxes are, the property taxes. So at 50%, that would be $100,000. Three and a half thousand, uh, five, fifty-three, five hundred thousand dollars a year. But your document says thirty-nine thousand. We can't, we can't leave it just hanging wide open for what it's going to be. We need to know what they're going to be paying for the next five years. So that when we're doing Tracy budgets with Tracy Blair, she has a fixed amount of money that's going to be coming in from this company. Did you put the um, in your calculations there? Is there depreciation rates? Uh, there's no depreciation well, rates. Well, personal property, property depreciate. The pre personal property just starts depreciating year two, so it would start depreciating. But it wouldn't depreciate that much in three years. But it isn't that that number's not correct either? So I'd like to go back. I mean, I'm more than willing to put if this commission wants to have a number in there in the documentation for the resolution. I'm more willing to put that in there, but I don't think that number is right either. I'd like to go back and crunch the numbers. I, I would, I would definitely go back and crunch them. We just, we need to know what's coming in. Tracy gives us a document each year and says, "Pilot, here's how much this one. Pilot, here's how much sure. this one. So on, so on." And if you just leave it a moving target, if they decide, "Eh, we're just going to grow, uh, we're going to grow hemp weeds in, and we're not going to bring out equipment," we've changed our mind. We could be looking at them paying uh, ten thousand dollars a year. That's kind of switch grass. Yeah, I agree. Time. So, but this is really the reason we put clawback provisions. That if they don't meet the qualif, if they don't meet these. Uh, numbers of employments, then we don't, they employment, have to go back and play. Employment pay. doesn't have anything to do, though, with what they invest in their building and their and their, pro, and their personal property. Well, they've got five years up until invest in that amount, too. So they can wait till four, four, four and a half years before they put any of that in. That's right. So they can pay $10,000 property taxes for four and a half years. Possibly. That's not a good deal for Loudoun County. Well, since you're only collecting $20,000 right now off the building and the land, it's still a good deal. So you're double, you're almost doubling if what they you're do collecting what today. They say. If or or the deal goes south and no one goes in there and you're collecting twenty thousand dollars. It's my off the building. already there. That don't mean they gotta stay there. Are they there? I can't answer that. You can't answer whether or not they've moved in and started doing their thing? No, I can't. I've I've not checked on them. Huh? I don't know which way it goes. Y'all know what they've got pots, but this one is this one's got a lot of strange things that we've never seen in the pilot before it's just not every pilot that we've done van is all different every one of them are different there's no cookie cutter to these pilots but they have everyone in this room in. knows that they have a figure in them they can have a figure Jack, what in. was the number that was passed by this commission in march 39,608 39608 yes sir 
for five years? Yes, sir. Clawback provisions equal $792 per position not created that would be collected annually. Could you include that language in this pile and resend it out all to the rest? Absolutely. Absolutely. And before we vote on it, June 1st, put the numbers in it. Okay. Okay. That's the numbers he that he just referenced, correct? Got it. Yeah. Well, whatever it is. Will you put that on the agenda for yes. June 1st? Good. I just had two quick questions. Sure. Um, what about the property on Center 75 that we had sold recently and they were supposed to build the road in, you know, that we had to move it back? What's the update on that right now? I mean, are they, they're still here, coming, whatever? They're, they're still coming, yes. Uh, COVID-19 has put a lot of uh, delays on a lot of projects and this is just one of those delays. Okay, so we're not required to construct a road until the tile is in the Yeah, stage. I'm not, I knew okay. that. I knew yeah. that. I was just wanting to know the update on them and if they're still here and coming. Because yes. I know we have collected the money from that. So, I have one more question. Center 75, have you been out there lately? No, ma'am. Who is responsible for the median? Is that the city on it is the Bowen? City. Okay, well, the grass is kind of hot. And playing to your local city councilman. <laughs> I think I know one. And I think you know one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't want to know if it was the city's. Yes, okay. it's the city's right of way. Okay. Prior, prior to year before last, the there was uh, the billboard money that was coming, uh, the revenue generated from the billboards were uh, being paid to someone to mow, but it's a city right away, and the city should. Uh, I've asked the city to take care of their own right away. Right, because the money from the billboards did not need to go for the mowing. Which basically, we were losing money. Is what was happening. Exactly. So it is the city's responsibility. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any more questions for me? Thank, Thank you, Jack. Thank you, Jack. Susan Husky, tell us about copier contracts and mail machines. So I have one minute to just give a little bit better explanation of the request for the beams, just since I've got all y'all together. Um, when you have multiple people in a community asking for things out of the old courthouse, the way the state law looks at it is that belongs to the taxpayers because the taxpayers paid for it when it was constructed back then. <clears throat> when you have multiple people asking and you choose to give it to somebody, you've got to have something of substance to be able to explain that. All I'm suggesting is that if you choose to give it to somebody, that is not a nonprofit organization, which are historic, not the historical, but this committee is not a nonprofit organization. So you're choosing, you as a committee, can, or you as a commission can choose and vote to give any piece of county property to a nonprofit. But when you start giving it to somebody that's going to make a profit off of it, you have to have some accountability as to where that money's going to and does that, what that money's going to be used for. So does that money come back? The unused portion of that money that's left over from this event, where does that money go? Who gets that money? Because that is a profit that has been made off of selling courthouse material. But they're a branch of us, so we're really giving it to ourselves. If it comes back into the county budget. Well, we'll just put it for the... If it does not come back to the county budget, then it is an issue. We'll say Could it. we trade those pieces for a cabinet made of those pieces? You could. Is that the cleanest way? You could. That's kind um, of <laughs> For instance, Greenback School, when we hired... Um, Harry Gilman to tear down Greenback School. He gives us a price to do that. When he gave us a price to do that, he then, as he tore it down, he then had right to claim the materials that he tore out of that building. He sold brick to well-known people in our community that now have a patio made out of that brick. But that was part of when you, so when you hired Johnson and Gallion, 
to restore and remove all of the um, debris. Right now, those beans are considered debris, and they're considered trash to Johnson and Gallion. But not to us. Johnson and Gallion could haul them off and put them in the dump, and county government, Loudoun County government, would be totally free and legally clear of those beans. But when you start pulling, why can't Johnson and Gallion <coughs> give it to them? It's theirs, it's debris. Johnson Gary said, Y'all come in and get this off our yard. Come and get cash. They when do that. we start giving it to various ones and you've got multiple people that want it, then that's when you have an auction and put it up. But you can vote to give it to them. You would just have to have a, an accountability of the funds that are left over. Where do those funds go? You understand what I'm trying so to say. We have two options. You? We can tell Johnson and Gary to scrap it and give it to them. Or we can say, you all can have it, but if you have any money left over when you're done, we got to know where it's at. And I'm just laying out what your legal obligations are, and then you all can choose to do whatever you need but to do. Even if you tell Johnson and Gallian, scrap it and give it to them, they don't necessarily have to. But I bet they would. He's got a brother-in-law that's into the woodworking, and all of a sudden, yeah. we don't have anything. You know, I, I called is. Johnson and Gallian and saying. said, Loudoun County would like to salvage those beams. So they pulled them out and left them for us to salvage. They did not have to do that. Oh, okay. So you've already had that discussion. Huh? You've already had that discussion with Johnson and Gallagher. Yes, oh, yes. Okay. Yes, I was because... Say, legally, they belong to Johnson and Gallagher. Legally, they, they belong, belong to, to Johnson and Gallagher. We sell them for a dollar piece. Leave it one. If there's, if there's any left over, you go through it again, and we get rid of them for... I'll well, wait. I mean, I don't have an issue, personally, That's clean if we want to give it up. to the Historical Society <laughs> to build a cabinet. But I don't think... I think once the cabinet is complete, you have to figure out something to do with There's what's left. There's nothing left over to build a thousand cabinets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so that way we have a brief thought, and we're not going to advertise it on the bill. We'll do it right up here on the courthouse lawn. Yeah. So I, we can cut it up in this, we can both cut it up into sections for that matter. So, I mean, if they're willing to build a nice cabinet, out of whatever they need, I, I think you're good to give them the, the product to do that. And my heart burns. Look at the camera. Three years in a row, we've got this little thing that says clean on. Right. I want a fourth one. I agree. I'll give you a clue. You're not going to get all the finding on that one. I think once people figure out that you're selling on people who never say that, there's going to be a lot of upset people. The, uh, that doesn't get a chance. When you get a lot of upset people, citizens that start complaining right. and calling and whining, yeah. and you can right. you can stir up a protest this has in the heartbeat. It's the silliest so. discussion I've ever been involved in. Let's talk about the copiers. Copiers. Let's talk about copiers. I'm just putting it out there, and I don't have a dog in this race. You all are the legislative body, so I'm just The problem comes down. Bo's group is not a 501c3 corporation. They're up. They're up. They're up. They're up. They're up. They're up. So that's what I'm saying, man, is when you give them to the county commission, well, so then you have so to be accountable for the county. Are they going to come to Trace? Ask Johnson, Johnson and Gallion who, if they would give them to the, to the 150 the group. Ask Johnson and Gallion, would you all give your scrap to the 150th anniversary group? There's the first question that should be asked. If you know, they say yes, we're done. They probably say we're yes because they don't have to hold They're making, they're not going to want they're making out of this process over here. Just ask Johnson and Gallion, I don't care whose brother is, somebody ask Johnson and Gallion. If I have to, I'll run there tomorrow and ask Johnson and Gallion, can they have those scrap beans for our 150th anniversary people? Where, where you get into the problem is, is if a group or an individual makes a profit off of county property, so John Doe over here wants to buy But, those, but if Johnson and Gallion gives it away, that all goes away, right? That's, behind, really. that's behind us. She's so right. That's the first thing. Ask Johnson. I hope I've made myself clear. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, multi year copier contracts, um, it's just, we after five years, we swap these copiers out. Uh, Lenore City is due for a, a, a new upgrade. It, they also, their machine is not large enough to handle their needs. So, it is a little bit of an upgrade in quality as well. Employee benefits is the same. We're adding a uh, a small one to uh, the mayor's office at Anita's desk. And um, then we have the multi-year mail machine lease in general sessions. It is an increase of about $1.50 a month uh, on that mail machine. Total increase all of them combined is very much ringing? Uh, there is some. There's about 60 something dollars to the mayor's office budget. That's for Anita to have one at her desk. She's got one of the little the hamsters are just about. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm all for it. She has to get up and go down the hall and make coffee. And 
two, you have to keep in mind there'll be a trade-off because you're paying more for this machine, but you also get free toners with it. Whereas right now uh, she's having to buy toner, so it'll be pretty yeah, much for more. Yeah. You can buy a new copper, you can buy toner. Yeah. yeah. You can. So. <coughs> thank you. Thank you. Susan, it'll be on June 1st for a vote. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Susan. Okay, Commissioner Shaver, tell us about the 90 day moratorium. Day we passed in March. Jim Jenkins tomorrow night, of course, we've all had going on. I, I can't say the word no more. I can't say the word. All the crap we've had going on, of course, they've not had meetings. They've not had discussions. Tomorrow night, I think they've got a workshop at 4.30, and I think he's going to give them his proposal. And, and what it was about, if you remember, it's uh, we put a 90-day moratorium on multifamily dwellings because there's some gray area of whether or not the 2.5 applies to multifamily or it doesn't. I think when, at least when I passed it, I thought it applied to everything we were doing. Jim thinks it does, but the language is vague enough in one of the paragraphs somewhere that it's, it, it might need adjusted. So he has his proposal that he's planning to make to them tomorrow night. Ultimately, they will make one to us. We will make it back to them. Y'all remember how that works? So all I'm asking is that we extend the moratorium for another 90 days, given that we've not even have had been have meetings and stuff. June 1st? Yes. Okay. Mar March, whatever March was when we passed it, so that should give us plenty of time to get it done after that. Okay. My second one is the question of our BCA, our planning commission, they have certain authorities. Uh, and I'm not doing this on behalf of Jim Jenkins, so don't, don't worry about Jim. <clears throat> they tell people they have to do things. They can't do things. If you do things wrong, you have to undo it. And if it's not undone in a certain amount of time, then you face a fine for not doing it. We have one right now that was told in uh, November of 2018 that he had to take the roof off of his wall. He built a wall, thought it was going to be his wall, then he turned it into a pool house. And he built a roof, which is a violation of our regulations. Uh, it's been on... The roof has still been there now for 545 days. That's a $50 a day fine after his time's up. So he's looking at a $27,000 fine for not doing what the BCA told him. I don't know what the answer to this, but if we're not going to enforce this stuff, why do we have it? Why bother? So I guess I'm looking for the mechanism, and I don't know what it is. How do we do it? Can Bob Bowman tell us how to do this? They don't just be a lien against the property? I don't know. I have no idea what it is. But right now he owes $27,000 for his $50 a day fines, and not only has he not taken his roof off, he's adding more to it. And we're, I'm talking about Mark Battle. I can't talk about him. He built a pool house right on his neighbor's lot, on the lot line. He I mean, started on his neighbor's property. Yes. And, and they made it move. But then he said it was just going to be a privacy wall to block the. Uh, his pool so you couldn't see into his pool and then he went ahead and finished it off out and made a very elaborate pool house and is now adding to it. Well it has an enclosed bathroom, kitchen, satellite oh, television. I was I was here tonight to be his address and said that's not a wall, that's a that's a room. Get it down. Get your roof off if you're gonna leave the wall, if not get the whole thing down. Get it done nothing but add it to it. Well don't they enforce that rule? Well they can't. Jim Jenkins can't enforce the rule. I don't know who enforces the rule. Laura would enforce the rule. Some say it has to be the mayor that enforces Bob the Bowman rule. Bob Bowman said it has to be the mayor. Was it Bob Bowman? Yes. Bob Bowman said it has to be the mayor that enforces the rule. Somebody needs to send a letter to this gentleman and say, hey, we need twenty-seven fifty. And the roof down. And the roof down. The fine don't let you get the roof off. So I don't I don't know the answer here, guys. And it's been there five hundred and some odd days. Five hundred forty five days. Two neighbors that are into it. No, it's not. No, 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 no. That's wrong. These are two Let me neighbors. Go on. But that now, and I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a side in this. I don't have a side in it. I can, I don't have a side. I can don't know well, you should have a side because the BCA told me it's wrong. But go ahead. I don't have a side in it. Okay. So the roof itself is he in violation? Yeah, that's not in dispute. There's also a tree as big around as this with a Widowmaker about this long, about that big around, laying on top of the roof. Is that our problem? If it, if it hurts somebody. You know why that tree's dead? Because Matt Lars dug up all the roots when he's trying to put it on 
start the problem. Right. That, that's civil, 100% civil. You're right, it is. So it's not our concern. No, not at all. The tr dead tree is not our concern. And so I, I've talked to Mr. Matlock about it. I'll reach out to him again. And you know, I don't know, you know, he, apparently he has a, a daughter, a stepdaughter or something that's handicapped and also uses it out that area. The risk is, you know, if that the one limb that failed, it could hurt somebody. And why and now? And I don't know the neighbor. Like I said, these they're in, they hate each other. None of my business. I don't know why. But if you do that, you're opening up a risk as well for somebody to get hurt. Well, here's so. the deal. It's not a. It's not a. No matter who's what, we have regulations. Here's where I come from. The BZA says you have a five foot setback from a lot line. Five foot setback. If you build a building, minimum. Well, he built it on the man's line. Five, we're talking about a five foot difference here, whether it's over here or whether it's over there. And he was told before he ever finished off his roof, don't build on that on that lot line. Furthermore, Matlock put his pool equipment on Strunk's property, and it took lawyers to get that removed from Strunk's property. Something happens and somebody gets hurt bad, who's that on? It's nothing to us. It's Strunk. That's between them. It is, but at the same time, let me see. If I, let me try Mark again. See if I can get something. There's done. not. A, you know, Mark's not going to do anything. I'll try again. It's not right. I mean, this this is just. Here's where I come to. If we're not going to enforce one, we don't enforce any. We can just disband all that. We all can't. County? We can't tell Commissioner Duff. He has to abide by BZA laws. But the commissioner Brewster doesn't have to. I don't Tinker, he don't have to. It's got to apply equal to everybody. Yes, you got to be brutally fair. Brutally fair all the way down the line. I you take the names out of. I've known all of them. Everybody's been involved since we was small children in school. I know all of them personally. Got no angst with either one of them. But if we're not going to enforce one, we can't enforce any. Because we just need to eliminate all the enforcement. I don't care about roofs and tree limbs. That's nothing to me. But our law says you can't build a building on somebody else's property line. And our BZA told him 545 days ago, get the roof off of it or get the whole thing down. And so far, it's been up yours. But nobody's nothing. told me how you enforce that rule. Does Bob Bowman have Bob, to do Bob takes him to court. Okay. And the judge decides. And, and issues the fine as well. Can the county be assessed for that people would have to pay the legal fees for the county? I don't know that. We got Bob on retainer. But I don't think Bob can act. Bob works for Buddy. Yeah. So Bob can't act unless Buddy, Buddy gives him the go ahead. The county Commission doesn't have it. Well, and Bob told me that we're the legislative body. He's the executive enforcement side of things. So we, we probably can't even do it even if we hired an attorney. Well, that's the way to go my thing is, we're going to be one, we do them all, we're not going to do one, we don't do any of them. All right, I'll be with Bob, I'll get the okay. property owner, I'll get with Bob again, and I'll have some form of action ready for June 1st. Thank yeah, you. I'm just going to defer that to June 1st until you give an answer. Okay. Gary Whitfield, looks like you got your problem solved with the trailer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, Go ahead. We are, uh, I, I'm not totally prepared to, uh, to introduce this yet. I'd like to try to move this to the June 15th, uh, 15th workshop. Uh, Commissioner Collins. Yeah. Adam had a request. I need to leave. I thought you could leave unless you told it. It's like ten dollars per. I don't know. <laughs> I'll tell you what. We'll let I will you. tell you all here. My wife is expecting a child. Hey! Late August. Yeah. So. Where are you going now? <laughs> you gotta get back. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. She's a little under the weather, so I'm going home. Take care of her. Take care of her. Congratulations. Well, I'm going to go home tonight. That was good. That was good. See y'all. See you, man. Okay, so we're going to refer this to June 15th. Okay, you got that? Got that one. Right. Okay, last but not least, Tracy Blair. Thank you, sir. I distributed um, several documents prior to the meeting. The budget committee had a, an agenda with a lot of items on it. And so um, there will be several things on your workshop for consideration. One is that the Board of Education wants to utilize $800,000 of AFT funds. They have a five-year um, building maintenance program in place, and they want to utilize part of that. This was reviewed by the Capital Projects Committee, the recommended approval, as well as the Budget Committee. 
there will be two resolutions to accept donations at the animal shelter. One is for cash and gift cards. The other one is for a $5,000 request. Um, acknowledgement of the new TCRS employer contribution rate it goes to except July 1st, it did not change. Uh, so it's the same that it was. Several different grants, none of them have any matching funds, and some of them, one, two, three of them, are related to COVID, it's related to the CARES Act. Uh, approval of my bond. I think Commissioner Brewster earlier brought up uh, Center 75, and Commission will remember back in maybe September or October, there was a sale of property in Center 75. Um, $290,000 of that is has been set aside. That's the county's portion. Of course, that park was built. It was a, it was a joint project between the city of Loudoun and the county. Uh, there are still some expenses that have not been paid. Estimated 60,000 for road improvements that Commissioner Brewster referred to, as well as about $12,000 contingency. That, that $72,000 is still in fund 119 for those purposes. But the balance was shared between the city and the county on the 60%, 40% split. So the $290,000 is what is the county's portion of that but it's still in Fund 119 as, as, as we speak. The Budget Committee is uh, recommending that those funds be transferred to the County General Fund and put um, in a reserve so that it does not get commingled with other county funds and that then the county can take specific action on how to utilize those funds. So that will be on your agenda. Uh, probably need a resolution for that, which you do not have a draft copy of a resolution yet, but we'll get one together. Uh, on that note, too, is there, do we need to address a time limit to uh, that clause on that, too? Because um, the how long? The contingency money? Uh, yeah, because how long do we have to wait? before they build that road or was that in that resolution that should have been in that if we wanted to do it i don't know if you could retroactively do it or not i mean it may be 20 years before they decide to come here now with COVID. i thought they were going to patch the road up before they were going to wait until after construction no it said it was in i remember in that resolution it was not until they actually started building and to see if they actually needed that road. Because we made that discussion. What, how much do we have saved? 72,000, isn't it? It's a total of 72,000. Okay, because 60,000 was for the road and 12 was for. It was contingency, just yeah. in case the road cost a little bit more. Yeah, yeah 60 and 10 percent. Yeah. And that sit that seventy something thousand dollars is part Loudons and part Loudon County, right? Yeah. So I didn't know how long we got to sit on that seventy two thousand before. Oh, by the way. Yeah, that was tied in. And what thing left over, we have to split. Yes. But how long do we hold it in reserve? Wait. Forever. That's forever. It can't be forever. It can't be forever. And then you have to find a resolution of some kind of agreement with us and Loudon and probably the company too. To say you've got five years, ten years, twenty years, whatever it Maybe is. Maybe we need to look at that agreement with them to I think see all if it's in there. Huh? It's true, and all three have to agree with it. Well, I'm just saying maybe there is something in there that says it. We only have to wait so long. I don't remember nothing about it, but I don't it's been either. a long time since we saw it. We waited nearly 10 years before we built the road in Tennessee National, did we, Mr. Tracy Blair? I, I think, if I remember correctly, yeah, when it. that uh, property, you know, during negotiations to sell that property, it, the idea was that it would happen fairly soon that that road would be constructed. Um, and that by this point, it, it would have already been done and the balance of any funds shared. I think we were talking about groundbreaking was supposed to be what, April? Yes, the groundbreaking was supposed to be in April. I've got a feeling the Chinese aren't coming real quickly now. Uh, it's Japanese. I don't think they like us. Uh, I think it was Chinese. 
Chinese. Chinese. Chinese or Japanese? Chinese. Chinese. I guess go back and read the resolution, see what it says. If you glean anything in there, don't, that would address your concerns. But I don't think there was any time limit in it. So we'll have to leave that as contingency money for effort. To get a three-way agreement. Well, Loudon, Loudon, and Loudon County might agree, but I, the company's not going to give up That's on that. I wouldn't think. I mean, that was in the part, the you know, purchase agreement. The county will put the, or the state owner will put the road in for it. Well, and I, you know, that's the thing about it. The longer we wait, well, it's like Samson Road. Wait long enough, it's going to cost about twice as much. So exactly. That, that's part of my point on this too. Yeah. The interest rate's not going to cover that. No. No doubt. Oh, I'd rather ask the Jack Qualls better. He'll be on top of it. Can you, uh, Mayor, I see you writing. Are you? I'll shoot Jack an email asking. We didn't know about this contingency money. They still want it. They better get to move. Don't know if I have any teeth. I'm not. Leave it to Idle for it. It's okay. Okay, the uh, budget committee is also recommending a revision to our agreement with the city of Loudon for planning services. <clears throat> Just to refresh your memory, right now and for several years, for, for several years, that there's a contractual arrangement between the county and the city of Loudon. They pay $25,000 per year uh, to utilize the county's plan. Um, each year the agreement you know, there's an amendment to the agreement each year because it only lasts one year so every year uh, it's amended with a new date a new beginning date a new ending date and it corresponds to the to the uh, fiscal year cycle the budget committee is recommending that for next fiscal year fiscal year 2021 that the city of Loudon will pay fifty thousand instead of twenty-five thousand, and that the county will not renew the contractual arrangement after the end of twenty twenty-one, after June 30, twenty twenty-one. Um, it is something that needs to come before full commission. So the budget—that's the budget committee's recommendation. So it'll be on the agenda for the next meeting. And most of all, our city planning is i mean all, most all the planning is done by the city at this point is that correct that a majority of our i would say no less than half to be optimistic is is of the planning happening. laura as jim both said half their work in the planning office was the city allowed the historic planning bza uh, we have to attend not we but whoever the planner is has to attend the meetings and then how this also factors in is we have not replaced the planner yet. Buddy's working on that. And depending on what our workload is, depends a lot on what we need to hire to pick up the difference in what we're doing now. Where Jim's now the administrative head over everything, he's still not going to be officially the planner. So actually, Loudon City was is getting a deal at fifty uh, thousand because deal. if we split it the way it should have been split, it would, it would have been eighty five thousand dollars. They were paying for half the cost of the planning office. Right, hundred seventy thousand dollars for that. Be about eighty five thousand dollars. Okay. So we're asking them to basically this year their contribution needs to at least go to fifty thousand, and they need to start looking for a new planner. I think that's reasonable. Very reasonable. Well, what are we going to do if we go out and hire a planner? You're going to have to continue to pay that salary. Even if you won't be paying seat. that kind of salary, no. Well, if you take away the city's contribution after next year, you still going to have a planner sitting there that now the county is going to pay for one hundred. Well, I don't know when we're going to be hiring that planner. That's just a well, and the load will be lighter. You know, you may have somebody looking to move to a smaller department. Where and salaries for planners, you know, are are high. Whereas we give somebody maybe look to a smaller department, maybe somebody towards end of career, we're looking at somewhere between fifty to fifty-four thousand dollars annually on it. But overall, but it'll be solely for Loudoun County. And maybe even if it gets light enough, Jim might just say, "Okay, I can." 
Jim said he's not. I know. I've talked to him. Because of what we could pay a planner and these cities too, but they're not getting a deal. I mean, For, if you had to do the Loudoun cities and Loudoun counties planning, you're talking about a whole lot. You're talking about what, $100,000? For the, the load that this planning office sees and the size of it, you're looking at $100,000 salary is what somebody could demand. So if you take away the city portion of that, you're looking at maybe well, you have half as much. Like I said, it changes changes who and what you need. What people people committing to going to all the meetings and having to attend and prepare all the documentations for not just the county, but everything. in fact, the city's doing it's just more than we got. There's more going on in the city than there is in the county property. I mean, that's what everybody's telling me. So. Uh, I'm just asking what kind of, if you're not going to have a multi-year agreement with the city, I think you have to be real careful on what kind of planner you have, or you're going to have a, like, a year from now, you're going to have a overpriced planner sitting Well, we've got in the budget for this coming year, $60,000, don't we? No. Uh, no more than sixty. No, no more than, yeah, I think it's 60. no 60. more than sixty, and you got Jim up to 64. Starting somewhere between 50 and 54 starting. Yeah. So it's about the work load. And I think some I think some in Loudner want to do their own planning. I mean, we started this in 2009. Little City, yeah, Little City went out on their own in 2009. And our planning commission ceased to be a regional planning commission. We still call it that, but it's not anymore when Little City came out. <clears throat> so when it ceased to be a regional planning commission, that would have left Loudon out in the cold. And we're talking 11 years ago now. And probably that time Loudon wasn't in a position to need their own force or their own planners that sort of stuff this many years later they're way past a part-time county doing part-time work for this time it's well, time for the one risk you would have with a ladder load and lower you're going to probably find folks that are either in the start of their career or maybe more towards the plot and we may have somebody local here that you know what that's not going to be a bad gig but uh, that's the only risk we run maybe there might be some inconsistency as far as longevity of the tenure Correct. but uh, at the same time we may find somebody you know what this is not that bad now well you bring jim jenkins up a little bit too to actually concentrate more on some of the county responsibilities yeah. where he's not been able to do that he's been so overloaded and jim jim we're, the code my plan is if this commission approves codes and plan will be one office again and jim jenkins will be the supervisor Sounds good to me. But what, what this, actually it was the budget prep conversation that this came up in. And I think Tracy is saying, rather than wait until June 29th that we vote officially, and then Loud, of course, is going to holler, oh, we didn't know, we've done our budget, blah, blah, blah. Well, of course, they do know. They've known for weeks what was coming because the budget committee voted on two or three weeks ago. So we're giving them a good 30-day notice of what's coming up in the next fiscal year and then what's going to happen after that. So it's kind of giving them a little more of a heads up than if we wait until so we... So they can go ahead and put it that's in the right, That's right, that's right. So, so it won't be our in our, our 2021 budget when we adopt it at the end of June. So with Tracy, I, I guess Tracy was one of the doctors probably good to give them a heads up on that. We're treating them fairly. I think very fairly. Well, you're still giving them a deal at $50,000. I mean, it's, it's such an issue that it might, I don't, I don't know, it might require a lot of discussion. But there's another recommendation from the budget committee that um, came out of one of our prep meetings for next year's budget, and it's related to economic development. Um, there is an interlocal agreement in place. Um, it's been in place for many years. I can't remember when it was adopted. But 2008. 2000. That was the second That's version. The second. 1998 was the first. I think it went back to the 90s. Yeah, it was 1998. And uh, the county, the two cities, um, um, there's a small committee, the Committee of 100, I think Little City Committee of 100, they all make contributions to EDA. And it seems that when that was originally written, the percentage of the contribution was based on the, the amount of industrial property in these areas. Basically, the county pays about 68% of that. Right now, the total budget is 235000 and the 
the county's contribution is 162,000, and, and and a little bit of change, but that kind of gives you the the uh, comparison of what the county contrib contributes compared to the total budget. Um, I'm looking at my notes, I'm sorry. The Budget Committee's recommendation is to fund the $162,000 for the next two fiscal years. Mm -hmm. For FY21 and 22. We cut $12,000 out of it. Yeah, we said it's one fifty. Oh, that's the second one. That's yeah. exactly right. That's exactly right. I forgot. That just happened last week. Oh, that's right. So we went from one sixty. The Budget Committee's recommendation is to fund one hundred fifty thousand, and I don't have those notes in front of me. Two years, then in the third year, go down to one third the current total. One third is seventy eight thousand. The third comes from you. I heard Commissioner say it. Commissioner Shaver say it for many many years. Uh, equal pay for EDA. So um, one third. The total budget for each entity is the is the idea behind that. The interlocal agreement addresses withdrawal from the whole arrangement. It really does not address a reduction in in in, the, in, a, in any entity's contribution. There's, there's, it doesn't address it. There's no provision for it in the agreement. So, but this is the recommendation from the budget committee, and. That will need to be voted on by county commission, and then the EDA board, the entities notify if the commission approves it. So we're going to do that on June 1st. Uh, it's the budget committee's recommendation. Whether or not it's on that agenda, of course, it's, it's the, so the same argument for loud and giving them a heads up, yeah. even though this is far less than the loud thing. But uh, yes, yes, I mean, uh, for however many years we've been doing this, and we beat this one to death in the budget committee, and we probably, we, I don't know if we ever really decided, if, if we decide tomorrow we're just gonna pay a third next year, maybe that flies, maybe it doesn't, I don't know. So rather than have that fight, it does have a two-year provision if you're gonna pull out. You give a two-year notice if you're gonna pull out. Doesn't say you have to keep funding, it just says you have to give a two-year notice. So we felt fair to give the two-year notice that in two years we're going to 73 whatever thousand dollars it was. We're going to pay one third, Loudon pay a third, and Little City pay a third. The EDA is just a non-profit standalone like 911 or anything else. We make a contribution to the EDA every year. Jack don't work for us. They have a board, Commissioner Duck, uh, Buddy Bradshaw is on the board, the other mayors of the cities and that sort of stuff. So the argument again here is to give them a little bit of heads up. The 12.5 that we cut out, we don't know for sure if that'll fly or not, but we cut it anyhow. We'll see if it flies. But the two year notice that we're only going to pay a third, we'll see how that goes. That saves us an enormous amount of money. We'll put that on June 1st. So what, what was the, uh, the cut? From the requested $162,545. One hundred and what? I'm sorry. One six two five four five. That one was good. That's yeah. that was their request. The budget committee's recommendation is one hundred fifty thousand. So twelve thousand dollars. And I'll have to say, this year working on the budget committee, we tried to look at a lot of things to try to secure a decent budget for this year and also to prepare for next year as well. Because we don't know what we're dealing with with these economic times and we're just trying to put as many pennies as we can into the pot and hopefully meet our needs now and next year as well. So you're just going around cutting people we have uh, cut. take we try to they be. have uh, to make up for that? That's what you're doing? We're trying to. So that's what your recommendation is. Yes. We're trying to position ourselves so that we can still provide the services for the entire county. Uh, these you. were not the only two. We cut several others as well. Some were even more so. It'll be paying people too. The, 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 the 12.5 this year would be would allow EDA to use some of their fund balance. Our, our fund balance, we're on the board. We use some of our fund balance to cover the cost. There's, there's 
earn all your forcing, money. You're forcing them to use the fund, fund balance for a cut uh, if, that you've imposed on. If it's that much, because I think it depends on how much in the red or how much in the black they end up operating with the property sales. Well, five. Was the twelve five made is correct, right? Close to it. Close to it. Twelve five this year. Okay. We'll put it on the agenda for June first. Okay. You have a copy of a working home policy. Uh, it's a telephone policy. encouraged us to go on and do it, get something in place, but prior to year in, get the policy approved by county commission. So uh, what you have is a copy of the policy that we used, and now, according to what the comptroller said, we're bringing it before county commission for approval for the purpose for which it will get served. Um, the mayor has requested that this be reviewed just in case it has some gaping holes in it or something. It'll be reviewed by our county attorney prior to the next meeting. But this is the policy that was used by our department. Uh, it's written in a manner that any department head who is a direct report to the mayor, it would apply to them, not necessarily to an elected official's office, unless an elected official wanted to tweak it so that it would apply to them. But what's before you is applicable to departments that answer to the mayor. The budget committee did not see this until this afternoon. That so there's no member of the budget committee that has had enough time to review it. Concerns were expressed. Are we opening up a can of worms? And, you know, is this going to be something that is abused? Normal questions. Um, but at any rate, the budget committee did not have a recommendation because they really didn't have a chance to review it. Uh, so it's not before you with the recommendation from a budget committee, um, but it will be on the next agenda. Uh, perhaps the document that you have, if we uh, revise it, then we'll let you know that, you know, just in case the we get a copy to the commissioners if he revises it. There's that. a revision, yes. Okay, we'll put it on June 1st. Take a good look at it. I was the one that opened the can. As it was ready. No, can, it's a can, can of worms. Oh. Anyhow, there, there was some, uh, I, I'm not opposed to it. I'm going to say this to everybody because the budget committee's heard this. I'm not opposed. I think having a policy is a good idea. Like Tracy said, we hadn't had a chance to look at it. I can see where there could be some real problems and some weaknesses in that. Again, it only applies to the mayor's department, just everybody under him. And if it's got the right guardrails on it, it's, it's handled appropriately, then I, it's probably okay. But again, I haven't read it. I'll be real glad for Bob to look through it and make sure everything's squared away and all that. But uh, uh, the, the, I guess the key thing is that it applies when we have a disaster or an emergency. Uh, worldwide pandemic and stuff like that. that I'd like to see it to the point where proper, with proper guardrails, so to speak. And one thing we discovered through this whole thing is that you can get so much more done without distraction. Uh, one of Tracy's girls was consolidating an account that's usually a two, three day ordeal. If we're lucky, get it a day. And so, you know, are you talking about at home? Mm -hmm. Or in her lockdown area. 
No, that's what the portal we've got is just like setting once you log it in and you're logged in our secure system, it's just like you're setting your desk. Well that might be fine if you got grown kids and no dogs. Yes. <laughs> I thought you had three, but I got three kids and a dog. Yeah. And they're yeah. well, well, this, this is she pulled it off in a day. Terrible. And I'm not saying yeah. weekly we should have some sort of evidence. Maybe yeah. some language where if it gets to that point. Of course, you know, technically, we did it, nobody know anyway, but I'd rather do it by the rules. I think having a policy, the road. I think having the road. policy is a great idea. It's just what that policy says. That's to me. Yeah. And one of the, one of the things I, I mentioned there, right now we're talking about, a, again, a global pandemic. But if it's not defined what it is, then it could be a rainy day, you know, or it could be a cold snow day. day. A snow day. It could be a snow day. Snow day. Be, so we want to, you know, just, again, just very careful what these policies are. Now the employees ain't going to want to do it. Hey, you can still work on snow days. So you're, you're proposing to uh, uh, have uh, your attorney to look at it and, uh, if it meets with his approval it goes on the agenda for approval of the full full uh, commission and that's what the state's recommended because nobody had one of these in place until they need so that's what the state's recommended and i think the don't know if moms have the eyes on the door i'm not sure i sent an email to tammy i, yeah. I did talk to tammy but i don't i think you had we want to make sure that bob and betsy are good with it and then if there are any changes, I'll send it out. If there, look at it. If it is, it's Bob and Betsy written it up, then I'll leave them on. No, it's not too bad. So, do we have any recommendations to it? Do we need to send them to Bob? Yeah, maybe you have any. Let me make sure he's got it first, that he's yeah. touched it. Then, if anybody has any change they want, then the uh, certain to Bob and have a little bit Or a man not of adoption, either way. And it only applies to the mayor. It doesn't apply to the other offices or the fee office holders or the sheriff's department or none of that unless they... Is that going to be a question to Bob, too, that maybe the fee office holders maybe need to look at something in place just for precautionary? Well, you know, y'all are legislating. Y'all don't let that county-wide yeah. policy. That's up to you all. Well, we can't enforce it. But now that's the thing. How do you we enforce it? They, well, shut, well, they shut this building down. They, nobody called me and asked me, did you? Yeah. No. Didn't nobody care what I thought. They, they just shut it down. But in, 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 again, if they did, what do you do? Right. What are you going to do? You got, we got no authority over it all. Just everybody read that real close. Everybody read it real close. I, I, well, I'm just saying, could you make a suggestion, Jim, that they need to possibly look at having something in place too? We want to suggest they keep all our chief deputies at the same pay. How about that? <laughs> Why? Why bring that up? Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll put it on June 1st. If there's any changes, you'll get a copy. Tracy, continue on. Okay, and lastly, uh, budget amendments. Most of them are self-explanatory, but I will just tell you a few things that are going on in the county general fund because that's where the majority of these amendments are. There are some adjustments to all of the insurance budgets, um, health, dental, life insurance budgets for the employees because in the current fiscal year, you might recall there was a uh, decrease in the cost. So the majority of the, those are decreases in the budget. You will see some increases, and that just could be because an employee who didn't have insurance picked it up in, the, in this fiscal year, but overall it's a pretty good savings. Um, their, the revenues uh, have been adjusted uh, based on what we expect at this point going forward. Uh, some of them look pretty good. There's uh, probably about a 20 to 25 percent decrease in all of the revenues that start with 43. Those are all the revenues that are related to the courts. Because, of course, the courts were the first thing that the state closed down as related to COVID. I've spoken with the, the, um, with the office, and um, we're just not expecting much more revenue than we have right now. So those budget amounts are the proposed amendments will get all of those budgets to the point that what we have collected through um, March is about 90% of the budget. 
said, of course, we've got a couple months to go, but they're just now opening up, and I've been told to you that they were significantly reducing their dockets because of social distancing and things like that. So we're just not expecting much revenue, and the revenue was down as it was. Through March, we had actually collected 66% of the budget. That's about 10% less than it really should be if everything was optimal. So there are reductions there. Uh, we're watching some other revenues to, and we'll have one more opportunity to address that in this fiscal year as we move forward. Uh, the other amendments are things that you will recognize and I don't, I don't think it involves any additional explanation, but of course you're welcome to call me if you look over it and have any questions. And I think that's all for the budget meeting. So the previous one was was uh, was cut because uh, of, of the money flow coming in. Yes. yes. Not want to let you twirl off the ice cream, but I'll go ahead and tell you this is going to be the hardest budget I've ever sat through in all my years of being in the county commission. I think everybody on the budget committee can tell you this. It's not going to be pretty. It's not good. We're going to have to burn some fund balance of our own money fund balance. Fortunately, we prepared for that by being conservative in the past. We have some fund balance, but we can't burn fund balance forever. But don't, I wouldn't be looking for any wrapping paper and ribbons and stuff this year because it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Hey, it's the worst year in six that I've been through, and I'm pretty good with money. I went home last Wednesday night with my head spinning. That was right after the BOE presented. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but we went through last Wednesday. That was a good one. So how much we cut? 270? 270, but I think it's a little bit more than that. Found a little bit more than 270. Yeah. 320. Didn't improve that much. It's still not a very pretty picture. It's, it's not, but, you know, we just have to ride and glide and see. And COVID definitely has an effect. But I'll just be honest with you, Sheriff's Department, too, uh, last year's budget is what's knocking our socks off. Right. Internet sales tax. We're probably talking. Sales tax. Sales tax, tax is booming, man. Sales tax is rolling. And I think we're actually getting a better advantage of it because people that are normally going into you know, Walmart or some of these other box stores, they're not, they're ordering online. That comes right back into Loudoun County that way. And internet sales tax has saved us this year. Well, okay. it, 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 it made the pain less, I'll say that. I won't say we're saved. I don't think I'd characterize There's still saved. pain there. If we were saved, we wouldn't be burning a million half dollars out of phone. Well, stepping on a thumbtack instead of a nail. There so. you go. So that, that's what the total amount was, a million and a half. Uh, we don't know yet. We don't know yet. We, we may have to spend a million and a half out of fund balance. Maybe a little uh, That would be the uh, uh, amount that you are cutting over this year that would presently uh, bring to a close? No. That's how much we'll have to spend out of fund balance if we stay on trajectory. Additional, well. additional money? Mm -hmm. If we'd have knew this was coming, would have looked at the sheriff's department last year and said there's no possible way but we didn't and we did vote the sheriff's department thing and that's where we're at the pickle and they've got 80 so that's the the hiccup so after giving him all that money there's only 80 there now you're taking it away oh no 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 no, no. we can't take it away well, he's, he's fully staffed i mean he's got 80 prisoners and 80 jailers so they're about down to one to one no, we're taking nothing away from him at all. In fact, you can't. Yeah, by law, we can't. Once you give it, that's a maintenance of effort thing. It's we'll MOE. With the people. Well, my concern, I really have a concern about all of the cutting that you're doing. How is that going to affect the operation of, of, uh, of this county? I would say in, in none. Most of the cuts were out of the increases. We're kind of like the federal government. You don't really ever cut one year from here back. You take what they wanted this year and you cut that back. We're still at, a, I don't know how much now, but we're probably still at about a $600,000 increase this year's budget over last year's budget. Is we that because the state is giving you that much take, more? Take the 300000 out for the BOE. We're probably closer to 
300000 in new spending this year. State's giving us nothing extra. They're giving us $911,000 that we're going to cannibalize every line item we can to buy anything that they allow us to buy out of it. So you've got 900000 more dollars than, than the year that we're bringing to a flow. Only in capital. Only, I mean, use it for can capital. only use it for certain no things. Construction. No salaries, no recurrent expenses of any kind. We're using it, we're upgrading every, everybody, anybody, nobody, no employee of this county will have a computer over than probably two years old after this. That's what they're really pushing. We're upgrading some of our servers, but at the same time, stuff in the clerk's office, you know, if it's a piece of equipment you need, now's the time. And so we're going to share vehicles. You can buy emergency law enforcement equipment. We're actually going to do that one twice. One at the front end, one at the back end. And that'll save us. Now that's one of the pennies we've robbed. Not robbed. We've moved borrowed our projects <laughs> over into David. What is it? General Fund. Semi. 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 Are you giving him uh, yeah. what, what, what was it? Thirty more cars? Is that no, it, it's it, they get jail. Jail. Yeah. These are jail. Six, six five, years, six. five or six it's years. Six years. Year. Yeah. And so, but we'll be able to do that on the front end. And then right before next fiscal year ends, do it again. This grant's very unique in the fact that the state of Tennessee is going to pay you. When you send them what you want, they're going to send you the money. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll so see. The state is sending money to the police. Well, this to the county, county. itself. The, uh, and that balance of the word there is no cut with the church department. Is that what well, you're no, it, we're, we're moving the money that we can out of capital projects into general fund. To hold on, we'll do that. We're gonna make this 911. We're gonna try to use it, split it up for this year, as well as limit what we use out of capital projects for the 21-22 budget. Not just in the shares. Into, uh, 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 into another fund. You switch categories. Yeah, we're gonna use that, that capital project. Somebody's losing something somewhere. Have to. Well, the capital projects money. Anything that we can buy that grant from the state. If we can buy it out of that, then we're going to move that money. Of course, now the thing is, we only had about, what do we have in capital projects? 200,000? 200,000. We only had 200,000 in our capital projects anyway. So, but that's 200,000 we're saving. Well, as, as a budget, annual budget, we have about 200,000. So, if we'd have had a million dollars so in capital what, budget, what's we'd the be real coming good. amount this year? The 911,000. See, the issue comes down here. Yeah, on yeah. capital yeah. only. Capital projects only. But it can also be used on specific things. Let me, let me help Harold out a little bit. If we could have took that 911 and put it in the fund balance of the general fund, oh, that'd been great. we'd have been home free. But they put limits on what you could actually spend that money for. So what we did is we took stuff that we would normally spend money on in capital projects, took it out of that fund. So that was somewhat of a savings. Well, that's, look, well I can see why they did that, because uh, 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 what's happened, you switch money out to somebody else, like uh, who, who was it we cut here uh, a while ago? Uh, uh, take it out, of, uh, take it away from him and put that money in there. Harold, there were seven pennies that we came up with, and we tried to prioritize those pennies this year and next year based upon what we felt would be recommendations to the full commission to be voted on that would still maintain the level of current services for all of the well, How can you remain the, uh, with the, the same current services? Whenever you've taken all this money away from us. We haven't taken no money away from nobody. No. No. And cut nobody, yes. I'll, I'll be anxious to see the budget. And one, one other little note, if you want to really have a, some cherry on top of your ice cream, <laughs> you heard David mention that we're, we've gleaned up about seven pennies, and y'all understand how the penny issue works. Part of those seven pennies were the pennies that we're going to build whatever we ever built someday. So we won't be building anything ever now for a really, really long time. Unless we go borrow money or raise taxes or something to that effect. So when the when Bo Carey's asking about can we put it in the courthouse, well, 
we'll be lucky to get the people back in the courthouse. I don't know if there'll be room for a lot of boxes in the courthouse. So, but the pennies that we had found previously that would have funded the courthouse annex addition, oh, whatever sure. it might be, they're gone in this budget. Do we bankrupt the county though? Oh, well, I'm not arguing it's no. right or wrong. I'm just saying that was our option: bankrupt the county, lay people off, and mass quantities. Do you know how many people that play off is again? That, is that what you're doing? Is what's that? Laying people off? Yeah. No. 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 no, no, no. It was use those pennies, or that's what we would have been down to. Be either use the pennies that we scrounged up, or massive layoffs, or bankrupt the county. That was our three options. We used the pennies. The uh, Harold, there was a report that came out from the UT School of Economics from Governor Lee. Matt Bauer came up with a report, and we've had great, we've had growth for about 3.9 percent over the last year. This year and next year, they're projecting that increase is going to go from 3.9 percent down to 1.9 percent. In the article, and there was 181 pages in the in the document I read, it mentioned that Tennessee now has a lot of money coming into the state based on the economy of international and national businesses. And if we have problems with China and other countries, it may increase even more of a bigger problem for a lot of local entities to deal with in the future. So we're facing things that we've never faced before whatsoever. Yeah, we said that last year. But this is real. Uh, um, seems like it's an annual thing uh, that, that you're, you're think you folks on the budget committee are dealing with. COVID has been unbelievable. And it's, it's sad. Well, I think our main goal, too, is to make sure that we maintain the services that we've been providing the citizens and just try to keep things going exactly where it is without having to add any more burden onto the citizens because we sure don't want to have to turn around and say hey we've got to have a property tax increase this Chattanooga is City. not the title well, you're not this working is not since you don't have a job yet. we'll raise your property taxes Chattanooga yeah. City or County yeah. is requesting a 34 cent tax increase and of those 34 cents, the majority of that 34 cent increase that it passes will go for education. Now you look at education, there are 45 components in the BEP. David Lipscomb came out with a report and said BEP is broken. Also, Tasser came out with a report in January of this year and it made a comment very plainly, BEP is broken and it needs to be fixed. The state needs to pump one and a half billion dollars into it today to equalize across the board everybody for education based upon the BEP factors. Well, I understand all that, but uh, it's uh, crazy. The, the part, but, since you mentioned uh, education, yes. what, they've had their budget in for what? Last month, week. Last they, week. They, they officially turned it in last well, week. Well, they, they redid their previous budget, yes. The, the budget had, so a, what, had what a, their cut. No, they, no, they I think we're, 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 we're uh, I, the Board of Education, I believe, is in good good uh, position at the moment uh, as far as cuts go. We, we had a percentage raise in there uh, that was put together in the budget before we had this process uh, of the pandemic get started. So. You know, we had been working on that kind of before spring break, and, and it was ready to go. Then we leave, go on spring break, and when we come back, you don't come back. <laughs> you don't come back. So uh, we amended the budget that we had. We amended they, the Board of Education's proposed budget. They voted to take that out the, the, that the superintendent presented to you. That is correct. And so and now he's, now, he's speaking now, as the board of ed. Now the new budget. He's board of ed, not county commission. He's the board of education. He's speaking for. I'm just telling you what they they amended their budget. We didn't. They did. The 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 board of education said it's not right to ask for this 
level of a raise at this time during these circumstances we so have you, you took the two cents away from the teachers no no um they didn't get it last year there yeah there was no raise last year there was a step raise but there wasn't a raise um so that we had asked the board of education had asked that there be a four percent raise they took that out they said we this is what we need to make our bud our budget be balanced three hundred twenty thousand presented that to the budget committee and we said if you give the county employees a raise we would like to be able to give the teachers an equivalent raise and so that's where we are at this moment nothing has been decided yet they're still working on those numbers but i will well, tell you your 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 uh you're dealing with the budget that they presented to you you haven't said this is what we're going to present to full commission no we only the board of ed presents the budget to the budget committee and then they look at those numbers and say this is what we can do or what we can't do and then that they present it to the full board the board of ed will never present it to the full board well the commissioner uh, of education presents it to the uh, full board at, uh, after they get through working on it so my question is how much did you cut now he's, no, no he's a, look at him as the director of That's school the reason i'm asking he's speaking to you as the director of school right now he might be the assistant the but school. he's just a heartbeat away the system yeah that's the reason i'm asking no no one no the, the teachers will get their step raise at minimum we'll get what the step raise the raise that comes every year that's in their contract if you go it's only a from the step state, raise. doesn't it? Yeah. No, it's in their contract. For the me. next big step from a budget standpoint is, and I guess we may start this Wednesday. Just to try to come up with three hundred twenty thousand dollars. Oh, no. Then we start sending that, 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 and that's going to be the next. Since we start answering the request, we cut it trim. Now where do we put the money to get there? That's the next. That's Wednesday, am I correct? Yeah. So we're going to bring lunch Wednesday. So you 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 cut the budget, but now you're looking for a place to. Well, we've more or less cut the request more than the budget, so to speak. Now the one place that we could see that one loss of service. We've had two departments come and ask for help. That's Carrie McKelvey's and Tracy Blair's. We're not going to split those. Uh, that is the hardest decision. We we're fixing to have to come back again. Originally, it's there, but it's something we have to address again. Saying that if you look over a two or three year period, what the effect on the fund balance is going to be. And so I think for Wednesday we'll have a much clearer picture after we see. More of the revenue we're putting the revenue to is to what effect we'll have on the That way the fund balance is, is, is going down, down, down. And then when it's all gone, what are you... Uh, well, we can't let it get all gone. Is that where you are now? It's gone. It's seven million dollars right now. So we're, we, we can burn a year of, of a million bucks or whatever or two if we have to, but at some point we hope that our revenues will come back and increase. That kind of fund balance, uh, uh, why are you cutting? Well, if we don't do something, it'll be gone really quick. So you're planning for years down the road. You got all the well, planning I think we're, we're at a dollar eight. Closest to us is Knox County, they're at a dollar 98. There's a million dollar a piece penny. I'd love to have that. We could yeah, have Monroe County is fixed to go through the roof plus a wheel tax. I think the way we've budgeted and the way we've been conservative, when the time comes, Henry and Jeremy, I didn't say the time's here. When the time comes, we do have to adjust the tax rate. The difference is going to be, you know, maybe an 8 to 12 instead of a 35. Jeremy, some of the headline, mayor advocated property tax. Whoa, don't you put that in there. That, that's that's, that's when the time comes, and I still think we're several years out of that. Uh, but we have growth. To. We always have to remember every year we grow too. The better our growth is, the better we are. But let me go back and hit the school board while we're in this. I don't know why we're done not going home. The Board of Education has asked for $320,000, one level. To give them $320,000, we have to give them half a million. 
Because a little more city gets 35% of it. Well, that's because they've got 67% of the kids. Well, the Lord City has 35%, but yes, that's the BEP formula. The second request level they made, as, as Mr. Tinker was saying, <laughs> if the county gives its employees a 2% raise, they would like for us to give them the money to give their employees a 2% raise. That takes their budget request to $800,000. Plus the 35. To give them $800,000, we have to give 1.23 million new dollars to them because Lower City gets 35% of that. So they get 35%. I understand that. That's the, that's the way it's been. For well, I'm, I'm just giving you what the, the big uh, numbers many, are right there. Many years. So we would have to come up with a half million dollars additional funding, which would be uh, <laughs> four uh, pennies. Four and a half. Well, five, because it's just worth about 100000 So not five the pennies same are at a million dollars. You're going to have to have 10 I understand the process, but you've got to remember for the last two years, you, as budget committee members, has cut Lenore City's six cents, six pennies, if you want to call it that, uh, uh, from what it was that previous year. We added six pennies to their property tax, and they're still 22 pennies below the right county. property tax. So, well, we equalized. We didn't write Harold, they're getting, Harold, they're getting $144,000. <laughs> tell that to, tell that to, they, to them. With, uh, I've told him several times. I promise you, I've told him the I same thing. To me and want to know what I'm doing down here, trying to uh, let you do all of that. You're, let, you're letting them pay 22 cents less than the county taxpayers pay. And they're getting $144,000 last year from AFT funds. AFT. And I hadn't even thrown in the whole juvenile center that's 75% more city schools. I think it's time to go. I think it's time to just leave. So moved. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'll call for an adjournment. All right.